guys, Sammy Jerush here for Cluster1.tv and ConsequenceSound.net. Hanging out with New York's own man, myth, and legend, John Joseph from the Pro Mag. None of the above, man. <laughs> I take shits every morning. My shit stinks like everybody else. Uh, I just happen to be a, an old motherfucker that was around. <laughs> legend, all that bullshit. I don't and see the that. reason this guy still trapes in the streets of New York City, the Lower East Side in particular, is because uh, he hosts a tour now every single Saturday, right? Every Saturday, 3 p.m., Master Cube, we start. It's three and a half. Hours of stories of the Lower East Side clubs, crime, art, murders, you I'm name it. I'm telling you, like, it's the only place you can hear about murders, drugs, and vegan food all on the same tour. So. This is uh, 171A. A lot, a lot of history in this building right here. Uh, 1980, New Year's Eve. Bad Brains lived in here. Uh, JWE. There was also a record store in the basement called Rat Cage Records, who put out the first Beastie Boys record. Dave Parsons, good friend of mine, uh, died of cancer about uh, five or six years ago. Uh, but um, the uh, on New Year's Eve, 1980, there was a fire upstairs, so the fire department came in and. Uh, Closed off the top level, so the only thing that was left was the studio. This is where the Cro-Mags started rehearsing first in 81. Dave Stein, Dave Hahn, myself and Harley. First rehearsals. Henry Rollins, the first audition he did with Black Flag was here. The second one was in Tucasa, back over by Manitoba. It was a little studio, but everybody would come in here and play. The Angry Samoans, Black Flag. Uh, um, fuck man, so many bands would come here and, and, and play. Back in the day, in the late 70s and early 80s, that was an after hours gambling spot called the Crow's Rest. And the guy that ran it was a pimp named Brownie. And Brownie used to pull up on the sidewalk with the Cadillac and the hoes and the whole fucking nine yards, the big pimp hat. And then you know, there'd be a secret knock on the door and they look through the people and let you in. But we'd be in the studio and uh, you'd hear fucking gunshots going off in there, fights all the time. It was, they'd be going till 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so that's why that was called Brownies. It was originally the Crow's Rest. Bad Brains were playing one night and there was, the hitmen came inside, this dude, Crazy Eddie, and they were smacking around all the punk rockers and nobody would fight him back. I had just gotten out of jail, I did two years, almost two years, 21 months. So I, I grew up around black and Spanish kids, so I was never I was never shook, you know, intimidated by them or whatever. So I said to Jerry, Jerry Williams, who just passed away, like, why ain't nobody fighting these fucking dudes? And he's like, yo, don't fuck with them, they're like these serious gang dudes. So they started pulling knives on people and like trying to stab them. So when the concert was over, it spilled onto the sidewalk and the dude went to kind of stick me in the stomach with a knife. So I elbowed him in the face and smashed his head off the ground right here. And I broke it. I used to wear all the DC kids. We all wore chains around our waist. So I got in a chain fight with these dudes out here. Ended up getting stabbed in the shoulder. But the funny shit was the dude that I was out here fighting for, for them. When I try, I lost my chain, I go to run in the studio, they tried to lock me out onto the street. So I had one leg in and that's when Eddie, you know, stuck his arm through the door and, and stabbed me in the shoulder over here. But Dave Parsons, who, uh, you know, the funny thing about him, little by little, he started becoming a drag queen, right? So it was funny as shit. Like, we'd all be hanging out smoking weed with him and then, they, you know, he'd have a little eye makeup on it. We'd be like, yo, what's up with that? And then like, he's like, lacy gloves. And he's like, what? I'm into Suitsy and the Banshees. What's the big deal? But then like, you know, little by little, it was like, and then we found a catalog for women's lingerie and it said Miss Mir Parsons. And M-I-R was his graffiti tag. If you look on that, he did the artwork for the original Bad Brains album. If you look, you know, the lightning bolt striking the Capitol, it says M-I-R. Dave did that artwork. So we found a woman's lingerie catalog, Miss Mir Parsons from like Fredericks of Hollywood. So we were like, yo, the thought of like this dude smoking weed with us with a thong up his ass was like, 
We saved the best for last. This is the Crown Jewel, uh, 213 Park Ave South. If anybody is not familiar, Max is Kansas City. Uh, very, very famous spot. Uh, it opened in 60, 1960s, it opened up. Andy Warhol, it was only one floor. Andy Warhol did the whole poetry shit. Uh, they had drag queen theater in here on the ground floor. Uh, late, later in the 70s, early 70s, they got the second floor and the third floor. The Hell's Angels did the security here, and the staircase was on a pitch like that. It was literally, so if you got 86th at, or kicked out of Max's Kansas City, that's how you left. The Hell's Angels would throw you down the stairs. The punk rockers back then were out of their fucking minds. And they were nuts. They would stab you in the fucking face with a bottle 20 times if you fucked with them. And that is not an exaggeration. The fights that took place over here, outside, in this club. Uh, Peter Crowley, uh, in 75, came along. He wanted to start taking the music, the punk rock, and all the bands north of CBGB's. Uh, but a lot of great bands uh, played here. And again, it was location, because you could get your drugs right there. And then you could come in Max's Kansas City. Beastie Boys did their first show ever here. I was there. Second show they did at Trudy Hiller's Playroom, 9th and 6th Avenue, which is now uh, a, a Pizzeria Uno. But so many great bands played here when the music started in 73, Patti Smith's band. Uh, 73, uh, Bob Marley opened up for Bruce Springsteen right here. So that just shows you, nobody even knew who Bob Marley was back then either. B-52s, the Talking Heads, I mean, Again, so many bands, The Dolls, Dictators, Cramps, Devo 77, Sid Vicious's, uh, all Sid Vicious's uh, solo shows were sold out here. The club closed uh, in 81, and uh, Bad Brains played here as well. And the funny thing was, when it changed from punk rock, where everybody pogoed and jumped up and down, to when the DC kids started, we started coming up here, and slam dancing, we would run up stage and take all the tables and the chairs and fucking throw them back. And then the next person would throw them back and they would end up in a pile at the back of the dam. We had to make our own dance floor. Because this was my youth, you know, coming here, going to CB's, going to the mud club. You know, all the old school uh, clubs, Dance Interior, Peppermint Lounge. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on, the amount of fucking clubs and bands and, you know, it's just becoming harder and harder to find New York, in New York. If you guys are looking for like a true walking tour and get like some serious history about New York, about the Lower East Side, about the music scene, I mean, look no further than this story right here. Rocks John off, Joseph. rocks off, uh, dot com, and I got a blog coming uh, called The Hard Truth about a lot of the issues going on, the food what's being done to the food, the music, the culture. So that's going to be launching soon. And I got another book coming uh, about diet, nutrition, training. So, you know, putting it all, putting it all out there, man. Yeah. Always stay busy, always stay busy. And I'm talking to you. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. And guys, again, rockstop.com for the walking tour. You do not want to miss it. It's fucking amazing. Come on out. Tell your friends, y'all come on back. You hear? <laughs>